and welcome to our service today with uh, Cove um, and Frimley Green Methodist Churches. Uh, we're good to have you with us and I, um, I'm very pleased to say that uh, David Ashby has got our message for us today. We haven't seen him for a long time so it's wonderful to have him uh, join us today. We also have um, a prayer and a reading. Thank you um, to Gwen for her reading and for Adrian for his and for Alex uh, for helping me uh, read a prayer that you'll hear later on. Well, it's been an interesting week. We, we've got a, the, the possibility of not having enough vaccines for the under 50s. Um, we keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers as, as things move and change. The news is often quite devastating and we find ourselves faced with, with issues, difficult issues that continue during this lockdown and the pandemic on top of everything else that, that happens in our lives. So we come together today to remember that our God, the Creator God, is someone that we can trust, somebody that we can look to, somebody that we can take refuge in. A God who's interested in all of us, each one of us as individuals. We have an amazing God. As we spend this time together, I pray that the Holy Spirit guide us together as the body of Christ. Welcome to visitors who haven't joined us before. And for those uh, who, who are revisiting, we are very pleased that you have joined us today. Let us pray. Father God, you have drawn us together in your name. We thank you for this time that we can spend together. Even though we are remote from one another, we are joined together by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the lives that we have. Some of us are having a more difficult time than others. But Lord, we know that each day that we are faced with difficulty, we can trust in you more. Help us to make the most of every moment in our lives. To lay aside our fear and our fright and trust you completely. That each step we take will be one holding your hand as we look to the promises that you have made to us. As you lead us through our lives, sharing your good news, the gospel, with those that we meet with our neighbours and our friends and our families, for all those whose, whose our lives touch. So as we journey together, we ask that your spirit guide us to be with us and to lift our hearts, to calm our fears and help us to rejoice in knowing your son, Jesus. We pray these things in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service and I'll see you later.
Creator God, unclutter our lives. Lord, we have too much, consume too much, expect too much. Grant us perspective to see this world through others' eyes than just our own. Grant us compassion, where there is need to play our part, not to turn aside. Grant us gratitude for what we have, our daily bread, the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord. Give us space, simplicity, thankful hearts. God of healing, God of wholeness, we bring our brokenness, our sinfulness, our fears and despair, and lay them at your feet. God of healing, God of wholeness, we hold out our hearts and hands, minds and souls, to feel your touch and know the peace that only you can bring. God of healing, God of wholeness, this precious moment in your presence and power, grant us faith and confidence that here broken lives are made whole. Loving Father, all the fancy words in the world expressed in eloquent prose, decorated with emotion, spoken with conviction, cannot compete with a heartfelt sorry when all other words fail. There are times when we are all too aware of our limitations, conscious of sin and the distance it creates between us. Sometimes sorry is all the heart can bear to say aloud. It is only you who can read and understand the language of our hearts. Only you who can translate our sorry into the prayer we would have prayed if we had had the words within us. Then you forgive, and having forgiven, surround us in an embrace of love, drawing us close to your heart as it was always meant to be. Thank you, loving Father, that you listen to hearts as well as voices. Thank you. Your forgiveness is total. No notebook, voice recorder or post-it note to remind you of that moment when. You listen to our confession, offered with hands outstretched and gently, like the loving Heavenly Father that you are, put it to one side to be forgotten. No grudges. No itching for judgment, no resentment or ill will. Not like us, who find it easy to say sorry, but hard to forgive, absolutely. Forgive us, Father, that we are often more willing to accept forgiveness than to forgive. M more willing to accept your love than to share it with those who have hurt us. Teach us to forgive as you forgive. Love has its source in you, Creator God, flows from you like an ocean into a world as unyielding as any shoreline cliff. And like the ocean which batters, erodes and wears away even the hardest stone, your love persists, finds cracks and inlets in hardened hearts, flows inside and works a miracle. Who would think that water was more powerful than granite? Love mightier than the hardest heart. Thank you, Creator God, for the power of your love. 
You have given us a world of beauty, and we spoil it. A world to feed us, yet so many go hungry. A world of riches, and we are unwilling to share. A world to care for, and we think only of ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God. For those times your heart is saddened by our selfishness. For those times we have no thought for others, no care but for ours. Enable us to see this world anew, as a gift from you, to be shared and nurtured, and those who live upon it to be loved and cared for. We ask this, that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of our lives. This reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, and verses 13 to 19 of the NIV. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. Praise be to God. Next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. Up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. This time Jonah started off straight for Nineveh, obeying God's orders to the letter. Nineveh was a big city, very big. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city went one day's walk and preached, in 40 days, Nineveh will be smashed. The people of Nineveh listened and trusted God. They proclaimed a city-wide fast and dressed in sacking to show their repentance. Everyone did it. Rich and poor, 
famous and obscure leaders and followers. When the message reached the king of Nineveh, he got up off his throne, threw down his royal robes, dressed in burlap and sat down in the dirt. Then he issued a public proclamation throughout Nineveh, authorised by him and his leaders. Not one drop of water, not one bite of food for man, woman or animal, including your herds and flocks. Dress them all, both people and animals, in burlap and send up a cry for help to God. Everyone must turn around, turn back from an evil life and the violent ways that stain their hands. Who knows? Maybe God will turn around and change his mind about us. Quit being angry with us and let us live. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. Good morning and uh, welcome to this time together when we wrestle with some thoughts I've been having of late, particularly about Jesus the prophet and the church being a prophetic word into our community and society today. For we have lived through a pandemic that has been pretty brutal to a large swathe of the country and indeed the whole of the world. Loved ones have been lost, fear of contracting the disease, rife, social isolation and depression and so many other difficulties. For me though, having had Covid as well as the above, uh, there has been another perspective. I've had a lot of time on my hands to think about the meaning of life. It felt really a bit like being like an extended Lenten period, being like Jesus in the wilderness, um, trying to listen to God and, and, and what he is saying to me. I began by reading a number of books about the Bible. And then I came across a comment from Oregon, one of the early um, fathers, church fathers, and paraphrasing it, he said that if you're reading the Bible and not being prepared to change, then you're wasting your time reading it. This made me stop and think of the way that I approached Bible study. It used to be simply to gain knowledge, but now I understand that God was calling me to gain wisdom. Wisdom is the understanding of what God is asking and saying to me and to us. My thinking then moved on to seeking. What, if anything, is God saying to me and to humanity through the pandemic? Now, I've long been interested in the prophetic word, uh, the prophets of the Old Testament, what their purpose was. And I came to the conclusion in a, a simple soundbite that they were speaking truth to power. They were speaking God's truth to the power that ruled the nations at the time. They told the nation of Israel and their leaders, both religious and regal, God's views of their actions. I'm sure Jesus might well have been saying today that the pandemic is a consequence of our sins a uh, failure to follow God's ways for humanity. Having said that, though, the prophets also offered uh, many words of hope, of encouragement, of a reminder of God's love um, for his people. And despite their sins, he loved the nation and would work with them to bring them back to a place of blessing. For it is God's greatest desire to be a blessing to his people. God longs to bless, not to condemn. Now, anybody who has had a teenage child will know that it is, at times, extremely difficult. Adolescents are, to a greater and lesser degree, somewhat rebellious. They do things their parents uh, do not always like. Sometimes parents deem it necessary 
to punish indiscretions. The parent, though, never stops loving that child and would always want him best for them. This is how God and his love for me and humanity seems to be. The prophetic word of God, then, this could be another title for Jesus. We heard in the brief extract from that wonderful story of the two friends on the Emmaus Road. They saw Christ as a great prophet. And of course, they later came uh, to know Jesus as a divine son of God. Though that didn't negate Jesus' prophetic status, it merely enhanced it. For Jesus spoke the words God had given him to a people needing to hear those words. Interesting to note here that Jesus never asked people to worship him. He eschewed the title of king and actively made himself known to people. His only command to us, his disciples, was simply, follow me, live as I have lived, love as I have loved, even to the point of sacrifice, of death upon a cross. So what would Jesus be saying to us through the pandemic? What would he be doing now? Notice I've avoided the argument. Did God cause the pandemic to teach us a lesson? Or did he use the consequences of our sinful actions to challenge the way we are all living? But that's for another day. One of the great cries I hear often is, let's get back to normal. The church is no different uh, to that. But was normal really good? During the pandemic, did we not learn to appreciate our lowly paid nurses and doctors? The men who go down sewers and keep them flowing for our comfort. Did you know that a nurse can earn £30,000 a year? But a football player of my wife's favourite team, Crystal Palace, can earn £120,000 a week. Is that just? Is that fair? We spend trillions on bombs and bullets while people starve for the need of just basic food. Is that fair? Is that just? Is that the way God wants it? Only recently we have heard about how many women are living in fear of being inappropriately molested. Is that a good and normal way to get back to? We've heard so much about the effects of skin colour can have on a person's life. Did God not create us all equally? Did he not put his spirit within all human beings, irrespective of race, creed, colour, gender? Is this the normal God really wants us to return to? We can spend billions putting a space vehicle onto Mars, wonderful as it is, and yet we can't clean up our oceans of the rubbish we have poured into it. We can't offer a decent standard of living uh, for all of humanity. We want to get back to normal. But is that what God is calling us to through this pandemic? I think perhaps not. So what of the story of Jonah? He's caused famous for the fish from running away from God, being thrown in the water. But what was God uh, saying and doing through all of this? God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh. Now, the Ninevites were not known for their peaceful ways. In fact, they were very bloodthirsty people. Why go there? So for one little reluctant man to go into that city and speak truth to power, to give them God's message that in 40 days, Nineveh would be overthrown. That took some bottle. Or was it something in the words that Jonah spoke or the way he spoke them? Whatever it was, it made Ninevites change their way of thinking and being. They repented. In verse 10, we are told then that God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way and God relented on them 
from the disaster that he had brought, he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The prophets spoke God's words of truth to power, even though those words were not very palatable. Did not Jesus also call his disciples to follow him and to do greater things, as we have been told in John 14? I believe the church is called to become prophetic, to speak truth to power. So what about us today? The pandemic has made humanity realise how fragile is its existence. Get back to normal? Is that what God really wants of us? In the psalmist, uh, God tells us that what he wants is justice to the weak and fatherless, to maintain the rights of the afflicted and the destitute. Psalm 82. In Isaiah, he has said, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and plead the widow's cause. That, I believe, still exists is what God wants of us today. Follow me, says Jesus. Let us not think then of getting back to normal. That's what has got us into this mess. Let us now seek the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Let us become a prophetic word, speaking truth to power. Let us be like Jesus, prepared to sacrifice ourselves for justice, for righteousness, for all Perhaps we can become like Jonah, going into the lion's den and the physical and financial markets and demand a change to a system that oppresses rather than sets free. Few of us, though, I know, will have access to a world stage. We all, though, have access to our local communities, places where we can be Jesus to people, proclaiming and doing his work where we are. To seek out the oppressed, the lonely, the sad, the destitute, those who rarely darken the doors of a church and help them to find hope in the difficult situations they immediately find themselves in and to have a freedom to love and to live for Christ. As we do that, stand back and be amazed and see how God will bless those that you are trying to help and through them how God will bless you. We have a wonderful gospel to proclaim. Let us then be bold and brave and speak truth to power irrespective of the consequences. Let us not then get back to normal. Let us step out to a, a brave new world and proclaim and demand the change that offers all people a re respect, decency, a hope and to live as we live and to know the love of God. God, I believe, is calling us to speak truth to power, to be a prophetic word that all is not well, normal is not good enough, and that God has a much better way forward for us if we but follow his ways. Go then and speak truth to power. Amen. Lord God, you have shown us such love and stretched out your arms to draw us into your embrace. Yet we so often fail to show that love within our lives or recognise its source. Forgive our short-sightedness for the times we failed to see your love in the generosity of friend or stranger, the shoulder to cry on, willing ear to listen, a word of encouragement, holding our hand that extra mile, Forgive us for failing to notice how much you care for us. Father God, you are the one who leads us from darkness into light, from captivity into freedom, from anxiety into peace, and from despair into joy. Yet we long to break free, choosing independence, convinced of our own wisdom, forgetting your love and grace. Forgive us. Draw close to us, embrace us once again in your loving arms and enable us to follow you in worship and grateful service each day of our lives. Lord God, 
your love for humankind, present at the beginning of all things, extends throughout history and touches even my life. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love feel pa feels pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. Your love sees sin and still loves the sinner. Forgive us when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your spirit and empower us to serve you this day and all days. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. It's been really a, a really uplifting service, great songs, great message from David. Thank you so much, David. It was wonderful to have you. 
Let us um, pray together as we close this service. God our Father, you created the world and sent your Son to live among us, made of the same stuff, breathing the same air, marvelling at sunrise and sunset just as we do. Help us to live as Jesus did, recognising in need of others. Help us to walk as lightly as he did on the earth that we call our home. Help us to have his strength, his determination and his trust in you. Help us to be true disciples, to be prepared to change when we hear your voice through your word, through others and through prayer. Your will is to bless and not to condemn. Lead us in our journey to be a blessing to others. Guide us into truth so that we can live powerful lives of witness and hope. Help us to participate in the life around us and within us, that your life as you living in us and we living in you. Help us to recognise as we journey out of lockdown the things that you would like us to do. Help us to see what normal should look like, not the normal we have left behind, the new normal, your normal. Thank you for the message of John and the disciples journeying with Jesus on the Emmaus Road. Thank you for the story of Jonah, how we can be reminded about what trust looks like and what prophecy leads us to do. God of love and life, restore us to your peace, renew us through your power and teach us to love all that you have created and to care for the earth as your gift and our home. Help us to appreciate reading your word. Help us to recognise the need for justice and peace that is real and necessary in the world that we live in. Help us to be true disciples of your light in the darkness we sometimes find ourselves in. We pray these things as we journey into the next week. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We're delighted that you could be with us during this worship time. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and have a good week. Amen. Have grace enough for my wayward